outsourcing your truth, giving your, you know, internal compass over to someone else, following someone else's true north, outsourcing your truth will generally lead to you feeling insecure. What's up, friends? Welcome to Spiritual Real Talk. I'm Megan Monahan. We're diving in today to a conversation that I really hope lands for you, and I hope you leverage meditation, especially as a tool to help you navigate it, because it's, I think, a big area where misalignment can really create a level of dis-ease in your life. And by kind of circumventing this mental spiritual pothole that I'm going to throw down at you, it becomes so much easier to align with what it is that you really want and to much more effortlessly co-create that with the universe. Big promises, but I feel confident in it. So what I want to share with you and kind of get into today is this, the idea that outsourcing your truth giving your, you know, internal compass over to someone else, following someone else's true north, outsourcing your truth will generally lead to you feeling insecure because you are building your life, planting seeds of desire in someone else's foundation. When you have that seed, that whisper of desire, In Sanskrit, we would call it your sankalpa, the intention, the desire whispered from your heart before it's cognized by your mind. I mean, if that is not like the sexiest thing you've ever heard, the intention and desire whispered from your heart before it bubbles up to the surface of your mind and kind of gets diluted in all of the layers that exist there, all of the constriction that exists there, that deepest essence of this is what I want. This is what I deeply desire. When you connect with that truth, all of the things that become a challenge along the way are met with a different level of confidence. When that seed of desire, that I really want that, is based on someone else's whisper, right? And it might might not sound like a whisper. It might like sound like someone, your parents, your peers telling you, this is what you should do. This is what you should want. This is what's important in life. This is what you should pursue. This is what you should buy and date and go for and look like and right all the things all those external truths that are tempted to find their way into your playbook when you outsource your truth to someone else it will always feel diluted it will always feel a little off Even if it ends up being something similar to what you end up wanting to create, if you look around and say, oh, this is what this person has, I want that, it'll always be a less potent seed that you are planting. Make sense? Are you following with that? I'm mixing a lot of metaphors. We've got a playbook, we've got seeds, we've got a lot. So let's break it down and be even clearer. And I'll give you an example. I'll tell you a short story. So I wrote a book. In 2019, it came out called Don't Hate Meditate. I was really clear, not that I wanted to necessarily write a book, although that was certainly kind of in the purview and the conversation within me, but I was really clear that I wanted to share my message with more people, share meditation, share a lot of the things that I'm sharing on this channel. And what that manifested into was a book deal. Along the way, I had six months to write that book in my contract. Along the way, there were absolutely moments of what did I do? What did they do? 
they gave me money to write a book and I've never written a book. I don't know how to write a book. What am I doing? How is this going to happen? How am I going to like deliver on this thing? And I will tell you that every time that voice showed up, there was in real time and at a equal level of intensity, an image that I could so clearly see of myself down the timeline having written the book. I could see myself talking about the book. I could see myself on stage holding the book up saying, I'm going to share something from the book. I'm going to talk about it. Here's a meditation from the book. I could so clearly see that sharing my message in this new way. And because I could see that, because that desire came from me, because I manifested it based on this big desire that I had to share my message and to then once I started getting into it to write this book because it came from me even though there were uncertainties even though there were insecurities that showed up or obstacles that showed up because it came from me there was a different level of trust that I could find that was unexplainable that was not supported by reality because after all I'd never written a book So those thoughts of, how am I going to do this? This isn't realistic or practical. Those thoughts were so much weaker than this deep seed of intention and desire. Now, if a peer of mine had said, oh, you should write a book and um, I have a publishing company. I'm going to give you a book deal right now and just write it and it'll be great and whatever. If that hadn't been connected to something that I wanted, then I promise you those voices of, what are you doing? You don't know how to write a book. You're a fraud. Don't do this. Why would they ask you to do this? I promise you those voices would have had a leg to stand on. But when it came to me, planting that seed of intention and desire, those thoughts were here. Right? Those thoughts were at the level of the mind where all the constriction and fear and doubt lives when that seed was planted deep within my heart and my soul and when it was supported by like these deep roots. Those thoughts were just passing by, you know, completely not potent, let's just say. Those roots, though, went deep. So they weren't able to be uprooted by this very passing surface level fear. So when I tell you that when you outsource your truth, when you try to manifest things that other people want or have or want for you, then they are much more at jeopardy of being uprooted because those roots don't go nearly as deep. So I want to ask you this question and I want you to reflect on it and I want you to continue to ask it ask it before you meditate, asking when you're walking, ask, keep asking it and keep listening to your own source, to your own whispers, instead of looking around, right? The menu, when it comes to manifesting what you want, the menu isn't external. It's an internal job, identifying what it is that you truly desire. So when I ask you this question, which is drum roll, What do you want? What do you want more than anything else? What is your deepest driving desire? When I ask you that question, I want you to avoid trying to answer it. Avoid looking around and saying, oh, well, that person has a house. I want a house. That person's married. I want to be married. That person went to college and got this degree. That's what I should do. Right? Resist the urge to outsource your truth just because it's more readily available to choose from someone else. And practice the art of listening to your own subtle whispers. And I promise you, the more you practice doing that, number one, the louder they'll become. And the more you practice manifesting those whispers, the more confident you'll be. And let me tell you, when you start to listen to those whispers, you will hear things and think to yourself, oh gosh, like that's a, that's like an entree sized thing that we're manifesting. And I'm not even sure that that thing exists. I've never, is that possible, right? The impossible 
is where your deepest, most aligned manifestations often live, right? So no longer are you manifesting from your current state of reality. When you start to listen to your own truth, instead of outsourcing it and trying to build and manifest your desires on someone else's foundation. So take that, take that with you today. Ask that question. What do you want? What do you want more than anything else? Like, subscribe, make sure you are staying connected to this community. I want this to be a conversation. So put in the comments what I can support you with, questions that you have, tools that I can offer you. Um, Don't be a stranger. Like and subscribe so that you know when the next episode drops. And until next time, as always, sending you so much love. I'll see you soon.